Oh, whoops, sorry. Pastor Joel, the KUMC congregation has to interrupt this service to show you some love on this last Sunday of Pastor Appreciation Month. I really appreciate Joel for the fact that he's such a good listener and uh, just thank him for all the good advice that he's given me over the years. Hi, Joel. I just wanted to tell you how much I appreciate your care, concern, and prayers over the years and how much I've enjoyed being able to worship with you every Sunday morning. Thanks a lot. Pastor Joel, we really appreciate you. You're like the A1 sauce. You're an A1 pastor. Bless us to you. Hey, Joel, thank you for the example you set for all of us with the love and devotion you've shown to your family. Love you, Jen. Joel, I really appreciate the way you have supported our UMW ladies by providing us with Zoom services for meetings and Bible study. Joel, I must say you have been consistent as a pastor all these years. You've been consistently a warm, loving pastor and a good friend to all of us. I appreciate how you always know how to show up and be Jesus to those who need support. Joel is very nice and he's the dad of my best friend. Thanks for encouraging us to reach out to others. I appreciate the way you respond to our Bible study and prayer needs. One thing that I really appreciate about Joel is how he shows respect for everyone. He respects everyone's opinions, thoughts, feelings. Um, He makes everyone feel included, involved, and appreciated. So I appreciate that about Joel, and he has a really cool wife too. Pastor Joel, just want to say thank you for being our minister, and God bless you and your family. Hi, Joel. I am blessed when you drop whatever you're doing. If I stop by the church unexpectedly, your genuine interest. Thank you. Hey, Joel, it's Carol. Just wanted to thank you for being so flexible and helping me to record the organ music for the past several months for the online services. I appreciate that. Uh, It really helps with my work schedule. So you have a good day and uh, know that we appreciate you doing all that you do for us. I like when Joel laughs. I do not have the last page of the sermon, and it's almost done. <laughs> Joel, what we love most about you is that you keep everything in total confidence and never, never, never throw us under the bus from the pulpit. And never throw you under the bus when Tommy heard it. Joel, I really appreciate your genuine nature and that you are a package deal that comes with a wonderful family that's been a big blessing in my life as well. We We appreciate appreciate your your guitar guitar playing. playing. Joel, you bring the Holy Spirit powerfully to every conversation we've had. Your model of servanthood is a real blessing. You are our sunshine, our only sunshine. You make us happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, Joel, how much we love you. Please believe us when we say thank you, thank you for all. God bless you, Joel. We now return to your regularly scheduled church service.
Welcome to worship with Kieseltown United Methodist Church. I'm so glad you are here today. It is Reformation Sunday, and on October 31st, 1517, there was a reforming that began happening in the Christian church. Christians began thinking, we need to have our lives formed in faith, in Christ, according to God's word, in light of the grace that God brings, according to the glory of God, and the glory of God is seen in God's self-giving love, especially in Jesus Christ and the giving today of the Holy Spirit. So we celebrate that time. It's a time we often think of how we need to be formed in those things today as the church, but in our lives too. We're going to start with a prayer. This is a prayer for the church, and it's a Reformation kind of prayer. Let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we pray for your holy church universal, that you would be pleased to fill it with all truth in all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where it is in anything amiss, reform it. Where it is right, establish it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of him who died and rose again and ever lives to make intercession for us, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
Hello, church family. I'm bringing the scripture lesson to you this Sunday. It's from Matthew, the 25th verse, the 25th chapter, and it starts at verse 14. I'm reading from the uh, New International Version. It is a parable about the talents. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants so entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. The master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I had harvested where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Are there any disciples of Jesus Christ listening out there today? Are there any who want to follow in the ways, life, and faith of Jesus? Consider the parable in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, which Jesus told to disciples who were gathered around him on the Mount of Olives just a few days before his arrest crucifixion, death, and burial. What have you done with what God has given to you? Think about the giving of God like the giving of the Lord in the parable. The giving was huge. A talent was not a single coin or even a very valuable coin. A talent was a unit of weight about 90 pounds. So in the parable, one received 90 pounds of money. The second, a second received two talents, 180 pounds of money. Uh, a third received five talents, 450 pounds of money. The giving was so great that it was more than could be carried. One talent is estimated to have been equivalent to the wages of a day laborer who worked six 
6,000 days. What would your wages be if you worked 6,000 days? In the parable, those were not funds that the servant worked for, but were given by their Lord, entrusted to them as servants to be used on the Lord's behalf. Take a few moments right now to reflect on what God has given to us, entrusted to us for the work of God and the glory of God. Genesis 1 declares we are stewards of God of the entire earth. We are given God's word, scripture, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and other disciples who live out the actions of God right before us. God holds nothing back so that we even receive Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the Holy Spirit to empower, cheer, and guide us. We are given forgiveness, mercy, new life, justice, peace, hope, faith, and love to invest in relationships and the world, to increase what God is giving in Jesus Christ these gifts are weightier than five talents indeed. While those things God gives to all, there are also those specific talents that God is giving to each of us. Take a few moments and consider the specific talent or talents that God has given to you. It is probably not the same or the same amount as other people that you know, yet God has entrusted it to you. Your talent or talents may not seem that significant to you, but they come from God. So I remind you, they are weightier and more valuable than five, two, or one talent of money. Disciple of Jesus Christ, God has entrusted you with gifts, talents, abilities, resources, and relationships for building up heaven on earth. What are you doing with the talents God has given you? The giving in the parable continues all the way through the end of the parable. The two servants who went to work immediately and with the five talents and the two talents and kept working and investing, reinvesting and risking all the Lord had given them, brought it all back, gave back and all that was gained. Five talents became 10, two talents became four. I think the Lord here, again, in the parable, reflects the giving of God. Both those servants were entrusted with the ten talents, and now the four talents, to continue in the joy and the ways of their Lord. Even the unused, unrisked talent that was returned was not kept by the Lord in the parable, but given to the servant with ten talents, and as it relates to God, to put everything God gives to heavenly gain. So when God puts hope in your life, it is still hope from God, but it is also yours. When you grow that hope by sharing it, putting it to work, risking it with the talents and abilities that you have, sharing your life with someone who is lonely, sharing hope by feeding someone who is hungry, sharing hope by employing someone who needs a good job, sharing hope by being a parent to your children or being like a parent to a child who needs one, sharing hope by witnessing to someone how all our hope is found in Jesus. What God has given grows. And hope, in this example, 
may not only be passed along to others, as in something we lose, we had it, we passed it on, we don't have it anymore, but in the sharing of the things of God, it seems that the gifts of God, like hope, only grows and multiplies in us. Like the parable, the things God shares with us are not really ours until they are used and risked in God's service. The things of God become truly ours and grow in others when they are shared. There is that third servant in the parable who received the one talent. That servant did not put it to work immediately at all, but instead dug a hole, buried it, and covered it up. In Jesus' day, this was a respectable thing to do with treasure, to protect it by hiding it away. When that servant returned the unused, unrisked, uninvested talent back to his returned Lord, we hear the servant was afraid of his Lord, blamed the Lord for being harsh, and was all too happy to give back to his master what had been given to him. The servant who only gave back what his master gave him was given nothing else. The servant who only had complaints of fear and harshness toward his Lord ended up with them a plenty and a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Disciple of Jesus, have you buried any talent that God has given you. Right now, I'm not asking if you can give examples of talents given you do, that you do use. Are there any that you have hidden away that you would just assume give back to God because you don't want it, are afraid to use it, or wonder if you will lose it? Just over 500 years ago, in Germany, Martin Luther was a monk. He was given priestly duties. He was given pastoral duties, even teaching Bible at the University of Wittenberg. He was very pious religiously, very well trained theologically, but all his striving for salvation through things like exhaustive confessing of his sins and following all the guidance of his Christian mentors, left him hating God. Martin Luther resented God. In Martin's thinking, God's justice was punishing people for their sins. The more Martin examined his own life, the more sin he found. He found that he hated God who was just waiting to punish him. One of Martin's leaders gave him those pastoral duties, like talents to care for other people and the love of Jesus Christ. Gave him that talent to teach others the Bible, the word of God. While using those talents, Martin came across scripture that challenged his perception of God, and it became words of God that were not just for him to teach others or pass on to others, but words that transformed his understanding of God's character and actions. Those verses were Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for it is the righteousness of God, excuse me, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith, as it is written, the, right, the one who is righteous will live by faith. Martin struggled with the righteousness of God or the justice of God being gospel good news. Martin views God's righteousness as punishing sins, but read here again and again, 
God's righteousness being revealed through faith and it being good news. Martin Luther had a big change in his life as he shared his talents and truly received the gift of God's grace in faith. It was revealed to Martin that God was not the punisher waiting to exact torment upon people for every sin, but the God who brings salvation to us is God's character, to us who cannot save ourselves out of God's love. Martin was able to see through Jesus Christ God who generously gives salvation. There's a few things known to Martin Luther and some of those reformers from his time. They would say, sola gratia, by grace alone. What a gift from God. Sola fide, through faith alone. Faith is a gift and treasure from God. Solus Christus, in Christ alone. The greatest gift, God's self coming here for us. Sola Scriptura, according to Scripture alone. God's word, a treasure right here for us to see the love and actions and mercy of God. Sola Deo Gloria, for God's glory alone. God is glorified and honored in God's self-giving love and grace. Martin Luther used his talents, and in using them, found God's best gifts of love and grace. They were his, and as he shared them, they only grew in him and others he shared them with. For all the talents from God that we have buried, I call to all disciples of Jesus, dig them up today and put them to work immediately. What else would we do? Wait to simply return God's love unused and unrisked like we never wanted it at all and refused to use it? No, unearth every gift from God in you. Love today, forgive today, Share peace today. Comfort those who mourn today. Sing songs of joy today. Feed the hungry today. Raise the dead to life today. Give mercy today. And let us keep sharing the talents God has given. God does not leave the talents of God buried, but brings them forth. Like Jesus, up from the grave, he arose to bring forgiveness of sins and new life to everyone. God does not hide away God's gifts, but risks them on people over and over again in the giving of Jesus, the giving of the Holy Spirit, in the giving of you. Take up. God's talents that God has given you and put them to work immediately and constantly in faith. What will you do with what God has given you?
us go to the Lord in prayer together today. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, for this gathering, for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Lord, be with our country as we prepare for elections coming up soon, and guide us as we vote. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Lord, be with all suffering with the coronavirus and affected in livelihood and school and work and community by this time of the pandemic. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I invite us to lift up our prayers of intercession for the needs that are on our hearts today. I ask us to lift up our thanksgivings today for those things we are rejoicing in God about. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day with the talents and abilities and gifts and time that you have given us. All these things we ask. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Happy Sunday, everybody. I hope you all are doing well. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Kiesel Town United Methodist. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to my mom, October 10th, and a happy 13th birthday to my daughter, Hannah, October 19th, and a happy anniversary to my wife, Jenny, coming up October 23rd.
Let every God-given talent be used for the increase of faith, hope, and love in the world and our lives. Let every buried gift be lifted up and risked in the life-giving love of Jesus Christ. Move us, Holy Spirit, to join in the joy of all the saints who work heaven into earth. 